Hello, denizens of the internet, your former network executive, trailer impressions. A whole bunch of trailers got released and rather than making a video on every one and going through the excruciating details of each, I'm doing a trailers mashup. I've, I've done this before and I, I prefer it because, well, I'm lazy. On tap, I have Miles Morales, Across the Spider-Verse from Sony, Blue Beetle from DC, Elemental from Pixar Disney. I always feel so dirty saying those two together. Asteroid City by Wes Anderson from Focus Pictures. Hypnotic, a Robert Rodriguez pick. Secret Invasion from Marvel Studios and Extraction 2 from Netflix by the Russo Brothers. Let's go in reverse order. Extraction 2 is a Netflix movie by the Russo Brothers. It looks like a good fun bust up. The Russos, of course, escaped from Disney Marvel and went on to make the Academy Award winning everything everywhere all at once. Proof that Disney has no intention of keeping talent that can make anything good, interesting, or non-woke ever again. I don't know if I'd call it a sequel as, as it's more like the second episode of a TV show starring Chris Hemsworth, but with a very long time frame between weeks. Chris stars and the trailer has a very well done one shot set piece that shows craft and not the usual quick cutting used to hide bad directing. Next up, speaking of the Hollywood Asylum, Marvel Studios' Secret Invasion featuring Sam Jackson as Nick Fury. It looks like this starts where Captain Marvel left off, where Nick Fury made promises to to the scroll to help them with their living accommodations problem, find them a duplex or something. This one is a series, and do I trust Disney to not do to Fury what they did to Loki? Of course not. The Marvel brand is so utterly despoiled, I'm not certain even the immense goodwill and charms of Sam Jackson can generate will save it, but I'm I'm betting there will be many curious eyeballs on the first show. Uh, I'm not sure that Fury's promise to a bunch of aliens is a strong enough motivation to build a series around, but we'll see. Hypnotic stars Ben Affleck and Alice Braga. It's got a bit of Inception mixed with a person with super bad guy powers. It doesn't interest me. I hate to say this, but they hired an actor we've seen a thousand times as the bad guy, William Fickner. Uh, I, I truly love the guy. He's a great character actor, but it took me out of the trailer. You either go with someone who can go toe to toe with Ben Affleck, like Jack Nicholson or, or Bruce Willis, or, or go with some amazing foreign actor that, that no one knows and never seen before that can chew up the scenery. I will say, it's the kind of film that shows the movie business is returning to some semblance of its pre-COVID days. Will it kill at the box office? Who knows? Could be fun. Asteroid City. The bad news is that it looks like every Wes Anderson movie. The good news is that it looks like every Wes Anderson movie. And it's packed with stars that obviously would chew off their leg to get an opportunity to act in one of his movies. The list is so huge that it's like a A-lister petting zoo. Of special consideration, I would like to highlight Tom Hanks, who seems to have replaced Bill Murray and gets to show how funny he still is. Tom's charms have been abused of late, propping up terrible movies. I'm really looking forward to this. Elemental by the former animation powerhouse Pixar looks to be a mix of Inside Out, Zootopia, and Romeo and Juliet. Fire Girl falls for Water Boy. Talk about having to wear protection. Looks frenetic, which seems to be the thing these days. Spider-Verse thoughts coming soon. Lots of gags. One might get when you're dousing fire or heating water. That's not necessarily a bad thing, especially for the kids it's aimed at. Elemental 
definitely does not look to have the baggage of Disney's strange world. This will open much better. Nothing woke in the trailer, but will there be non-binary clouds and same-sex trees fertilizing each other? <laughs> of course. Does anyone trust Disney or Pixar anymore? Blue Beetle, the next pre-James Gunn movie that DC has to burn off before we finally get to Gunn's efforts to save DC's superhero franchises. And then don't forget, we still have to get through The Flash and Aquaman 2. Blue Beetle looks to be a fun superhero movie with added salsa, but not much jalapeno. It's clearly playing for many laughs as cinema's first Latino superhero, if, I guess if you don't count Namor. Was he a superhero? Bad guy? I, anyway, I don't know what he was. I love that Blue Beetle's reveal was in front of his entire family, featuring the wonderful overacting of comedian George Lopez. Not sure how much of the Latino experience the movie will exploit, but Outside of what the trailer showed, the superhero part looked like everything we've already seen. I know nothing about the comic books, but seeing that they've resorted to the same dreadful nanoparticle bullshit of recent Iron Man suit outings is just a horrible new thing that CGI allows but obviously perpetrated by lazy writers or lazy producers or lazy studios that don't understand the story value in physical costumes and just want to get the damn change over with. Clearly, they have never seen a Sailor Moon episode where the transformation to Sailor Scout takes a glorious long time. The Blue Beetle suit, it seems, will tell the user what to do, reveal Green Lantern-like powers when needed, and will automatically protect the occupant from harm regardless. This movie should have been released five years ago. And finally, that... A uh, bizarre dig at the end about Batman being a fascist from Lopez's character, I'm sure, was put there to create a buzz. Whether that buzz will be positive or negative remains to be seen. I don't see huge box office for this movie. Finally, Miles Morales across the Spider-Verse. Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Miles Morales is Miles Morales. Let's just get that out of the way. I loved the first movie. Do we need a sequel that returns us back into the Spider-Verse? No. And definitely not this hyper ADHD-infused version with so many spider entities that it just looked stupid. Clearly, the producers wanted to bring back some of the characters from the first movie, but this version is going to suffer from the same problem as Ant-Man Quantumania. This made-up world of flying triangles and pentagons is not grounded in anything. It's, it's fallen into the same trap as the expanded universe of stupidity that Marvel finds itself in. Spider-Man No Way Home inflicted just enough of it to not irritate the crap out of us, but as I said in a previous review, we need our superheroes to return to a smaller, local-scale experience. Just because animators can fill a screen with clown barf doesn't mean it's the best thing to do. Don't forget, He's supposed to be the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Can we please return our superheroes back to their neighborhoods? I'm certain the movie will open huge, especially with the wind of goodwill from the previous movie pushing it. It does look fun. Will upping the hyperkinetic experience work? We shall see. Of all the movies, this could be the $1 billion option. One thing that might be a damper for some is that it does contain wokery. We have the BLM tag on Miles's bag and, and a protect trans kids decal on his wall. Really? You needed to do this. 
Why risk your box office for such childish inserts? And this is going to blow up and it will be the only thing people will be discussing about your trailer online. Hollywood, when are you going to learn? What, what did you folks think about the trailers? Anyways, till next time, denizens, be seeing you. Bye.